So the question asks us to sketch the function f of x equal to a quarter x plus 3 and hence find the solution to a quarter x plus 3 on modulus brackets greater than or equal to 3. So I went to this website called desmos.com to actually uh, get a sketch of the graph. Now this is in the book. I don't think you'd be asked to come up with something like this in an exam. But I like to use this tool on this website just to give me an idea of what graphs look like. There are such things as graphing calculators, but have a look there quickly and see what you think. Okay, so we go to this website here, desmos.com, and then you will go to um, Graphing Calculator. And in Graphing Calculator then, it brings up this thing here. It loads it up, and you can actually type in whatever function you want, but you can actually type in multiple functions as well. It's pretty nice. Now, down beside your Z button, near the backslash, you will see above that shift, and actually get your straight line modulus bracket. So for the graph we want to do, I am putting in a quarter X plus three. So I, I'll just do that as like, brackets x divided by 4 and close the bracket and then it says x divided by 4 plus 3 and then finish the modulus so I have it in here now so if I zoom right out there I go I can see it has this uh, kink or this point at it looks to be minus 12 0 so I can kind of pick the points around that there now to to graph it and it gives me a good idea of what it looks like so yeah, it's a really handy tool to be able to use. So now to actually do it, right, we figured out looking at the website that it touches here at minus 12. Now, another way of doing it without using a graphing calculator, like say you were stuck, you didn't have access to a, um, a laptop to actually put in the graphing calculator. So what you could do is you could just decide, well, they're all inside the modulus brackets. This thing is always going to be positive. A modulus graph always has this V-shape. How do I figure out where it touches off the x-axis? Well, it touches off the x-axis when the stuff inside here ends up being zero. So when does a quarter of x plus three equals to zero? And well, you can just sort this out with simple algebra. A quarter x equal to minus three. Maybe multiply both sides by four. So you figure out then that when x is equal to minus 12, that's where y is equal to zero. And you know being a modulus graph, it's going to be V-shaped. Now, the next thing it asks us then is what about to f use this graph then to solve or solve, look at this graph, get the range of values where this stuff is greater than or equal to 3. So we have to actually draw in, let's, well, we don't have to, but I'm going to draw in the 3 line here, okay? So let's go something like this here. I'm not sure now whether it goes above or below, but it doesn't matter, right? Uh, x equal to 0, okay? So let's just say this was the line y is equal to 3. So we know that if we're looking for greater than or um, equal to 3, it's going to have some point here on the x-axis. It's going to be all these values here going this way, and all these values here going this way, when it's actually, when this function is actually above the line, or greater than the line is equal to 3. So we're going to have some value where we're going to be x greater than going this way, are less than going this way. We're not going to have what we these values in between these two points. So it's important for shape and other inequality. So let's figure out these points. So again, what are these points called? These are the points of intersection. Intersection between this and this. So we actually want to know where is this stuff actually equal to three? All right. So let's look at that. Where is the modulus of a quarter x plus three equal to three? Well, this is the way I like to think of it. This stuff is equal to 3 when all this stuff in here can be equal to 3 or minus 3. Because if a quarter x plus 3 happens to be minus 3, well, the modulus of minus 3 gives us that plus 3 we're looking for. So let's make two equations. First equation, where we just simply say a quarter of x plus 3. When is that equal to 3? Let's rearrange this a bit. 3, we cancel the 3, subtract from both sides, leaving us 0. The only way a quarter of x could be equal to 0 is if x was actually equal to 0. Or you could just do multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the quarter, and 4 times 0, of course, is 0. So we know x equal to 0 is 1, so it actually ends up, this actually crosses over right here, right? And the other option was when a quarter of x plus 3 could be equal to minus 3. So again, let's bring over our 3. We get a quarter of x is now equal to 3 minus 3 minus 3 minus 6. Let's multiply both sides by 4. 
that gives us x here, gets rid of that quarter, gives us minus 24 here. Yeah, so there's the other point. So it's down here, minus 24. So at 0 and minus 24, these are these two points of intersection. So our inequality then answer says that this purple line, which is this graph, is above 3 when x gets bigger or equal to, of course, 0, or less than or equal to minus 24. And that's it.